Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 free to play Steam games of 2018 and 2019. This list will focus on games that are not very well known, and hence the following games will not be included Warframe, Path of Exile, Dota 2, Team Fortress 2, Paladins, Shadowverse, VRChat, and War Thunder. For reference, many of those games are better than the ones I'm going to be talking about today. It's just going over them would be redundant given how popular these titles are. However, if you haven't played Warframe, Path of Exile and Dota 2, then I highly suggest to, as these games are by far the best free to play Steam games that are out right now. But with all of that said, let's go and get into the top 10 list. And if I missed out any games that you guys think should be on this list, tell me in the comment section below. Dreadnought is a futuristic space battle game, similar to World of Warships but in the sky, with the player taking control of a massive spacecraft with a variety of weapons and abilities. There are many ships that you can choose from, each with drawbacks and advantages in categories such as speed and size. Combat is epic with positioning and target selection being key, along with the ability to allocate power on the fly to weapons, shields and engines. Be wary that like many games in this genre, the grind is painful and pay to win exists. However, for a quick 10 minute match, Dreadnought holds up pretty well. Fallout Shelter on the surface is simple. Build and manage your own vault as the leader and coordinator. Gameplay revolves around keeping the citizens of the vault very happy by providing power, food and water. You can rescue dwellers from the wasteland and assign them to different sections of the vault according to the stats. And while this isn't a completely fully fledged title like some of the other games on this list, Fallout Shelter is the perfect distraction during a match queue or if you want to go and kill some time. Battle Royale is the theme for 2018, and Cuisine Royale is the first of two Battle Royale games that makes this top 10 list. However, don't be confused because this isn't your typical BR game. Originally starting as just an April Fool's joke, Cuisine Royale has turned into a completely fully fledged title that holds up quite well. Movement and combat is functional, while performance is smooth and really playable. However, the main draw to this game is around the looting, where instead of picking up armor, you pick up kitchen utensils, like pans and colanders, and the going rounded out, there is a decent variety of weaponry as well. Overall, Cuisine Royale is a bit of a meme, it's a bit of a meme take on the Battle Royale genre, but it's a fun one at that, and fantastic for a quick match with your friends. While Smite isn't a new game by any stretch of the word, as it was released on Steam in 2015, it's a game I haven't mentioned much on this channel and it generally flies under the radar. The easiest way to explain Smite is that it's a third person MOBA, i.e. something like League of Legends or Dota 2, but from the third person perspective. In reality, this is a crude definition, as Smite is actually much more than this, with an emphasis put on precise movement and accurately landing attacks. With tons of characters of players, a dedicated fan base, and a substantial esports scene, Smite is a MOBA worth playing if the more mainstream titles aren't cut out for you. Combat Arms was one of the most popular free to play first person shooters back in the day, before its fall from grace. The reloaded update in 2017 attempted to revive the game, however, only now in 2018 has the update come into its own, bringing back a taste of the old school gameplay we once loved. Weapon balance has been reworked, evening out the playing field, along with a large portion of the weapon base being completely free and not requiring any in-game or real-life currency. While not completely its former self, Combat Arms Reloaded is a very big step in the right direction. The gameplay was never an issue and it's retained throughout this update, fast, fun and chaotic with a ton of maps and a ton of modes. So overall, Combat Arms Reloaded is definitely a first person shooter worth trying for old and new fans. World of Tanks, World of Warplanes and now World of Warships. The wargaming roster is expansive and the latest addition to this series is just as impressive as the others. Focusing on massive team based PvP naval combat. World of Warships follows the familiar trend of shoot, destroy and unlock, with there being over 200 vessels to try out. The gameplay, graphics and sound are astounding and shows why Wargaming is the best at making these type of games. However be warned, the grind to unlock vessels and tiers is quite painful, especially as a free to play user, and payment is almost like required at some point in order to go and progress. 
Despite this shortfall, World of Warships is a fantastic game and worth trying out for fans of the genre. Quake Champions is the latest iteration to the Quake series, with the biggest change being the addition of Champions. While similar in concept to Heroes from Overwatch, the characters in Quake Champions affect the gameplay to less of an extent, with a moderate cooldown ability breaking up the gameplay. With that said though, the majority of the focus is towards the classic Quake combat and movement, which admittedly has been changed a bit for Quake Champions, but still retains the DNA of titles such as Quake Live and Quake 3, along with an abundance of modes and classic maps. Overall, Quake Champions is a very solid free-to-play title and a definite download for you old-school Quake fans. Anyone that has played an Asian free-to-play first-person shooter will instantly recognize the movement and gun mechanics of Black Squad, as it's quite similar to games like Crossfire and more noticeably CSGO. This means that skill is the determining factor, with one-shot, one-kill headshots and lethal one-shot snipers being the standard. Compared to when I last checked this game out last year, the amount of modes and maps have exploded, with there being a larger variety of ways to experience Black Squad. Of particular significance is the inclusion of clan battles and a ranked mode, which is perfectly fair with a lack of pay to win as the only monetization is through skins. Overall, Black Squad has earned its place as the most popular free-to-play first-person shooter on Steam, and for good reason. The game is solid, fun, and has a very high skill cap, perfect for casual TDM and hardcore players. Ah, Maple Story, I remember playing the original many years ago, the massively popular side-scrolling MMO with a hardcore and dedicated fan base. But as Nexon does, the game started to slide, and it fell off considerably, but that's where Maple Story 2 comes in. A 3D reimagining of sorts, MapleStory 2 brings simple but entertaining gameplay into a vibrant world with a variety of classes to choose from. The graphics are cute and fun, with it being reasonably easy to run this game on most PCs, and for the most part the gameplay experience is polished with a lack of glitches or bugs. Added in a variety of servers and a non-pay-to-win model, MapleStory 2 is perfect for casual and hardcore MMO fans. And now we have the honourable list, and this is where I get a little bit sad, because the first one on our list is Dirty Bomb. And this is a game that I've loved for such a long time, but simply I just can't recommend the game anymore. Why you may say? Well, the developer's splash damage have officially stopped development, and thus no more updates will be released. This is really, really sad given how good the base gameplay of Dirty Bomb is. It's just a string of terrible decisions by the developers have ruined any chance of this game becoming great again. It's by no means a bad game though. The parkour movement, insane. The amount of characters available, insane as well. The maps, fantastic. The modes, fantastic as well. The game is still very much playable and there is still a very core player base at its heart, but... It's difficult to recommend this game for a person that hasn't played it before simply because there's not going to be any more support from developers. But with that said, it is still a fantastic free-to-play first-person shooter and definitely like in my top five, not for games I'd recommend, but for games that I really do cherish and love. The second game I'm going to be talking about is Creative Destruction, and it's basically Fortnite, but like worse and better in some aspects, and that's like pretty much it. Originally a mobile game, but now ported to the PC, Creative Destruction provides a similar but like diluted experience to Fortnite. The main draw for this game is that a lot of players can't go and meet the Fortnite minimum specifications because the computers are toasters. With Creative Destruction, the graphics are considerably worse and that makes it quite easy to go and play this game on computers that can't go and run Fortnite. Despite this, the gameplay itself actually holds up quite well. It's actually kind of enjoyable, and it's very much like copycatting what Fortnite has gone and done, so it's not bringing, you know, any ounce of creativity or anything like that, despite the name, ironically. But, you know, it holds up sufficiently well as a battery hour game, and if you have younger kids that you don't have a console, your computer can't go and run it, put them on this game, and they'll get their Fortnite fix one way or another. Coming in at the number one spot, we have got Ring of Elysium. Do you want PUBG, but more optimized and free to play? Well, Ring of Elysium is for you. This game very much feels like a slightly faster paced version of PUBG, as the movement is realistic, but the pace of being increased, it's not just as sluggy as PUBG. The combat is snappy and the time to kill is fast. 
The best way to sum up the gameplay is that it's a slightly more arcadey version of PUBG, straying more into the fun territory than the realistic, but it doesn't go anywhere near the arcadiness of Call of Duty Blackout. Furthermore, the inventory system is on point, with the looting system working quite well, and on top of that, the map is expansive and detailed, with a circle not coming in as a circle, but more in a jagged area type, so it's actually quite unpredictable and you have to be on your toes. For these aspects, it takes what PUBG has, puts a slight twist on it, and arguably comes out the winner. Quickly talking about the technical side of things, this game runs really nice for me on low. My FPS drops heavily in big towns, and people have been complaining about that as well, but it definitely runs better than PUBG, so that's a tick in my book. I honestly don't care much about graphics, but the game looks really nice to me, with a snowy playing field looking absolutely beautiful even on low settings. Overall, this is a fantastic battery hour game that is definitely worth a download, even if you don't have any change to spare. And that's it, boys. The top 10 free to play Steam games for 2018 and 2019. If you enjoyed, make sure to go and hit like and subscribe for more top 10s. Bye for now, it's Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under. Out.